All right, so year ten. So this will be our seventh lesson um, video on the factorization. Okay, so uh, we've we've learned how to factorize um, monic trinomial quadratic polynomial, right? But today we are going to do some more general case. It's not monic case. Okay, so let's let's review. Um, how how the method of learns work for monic um, trinomial first, right? Okay, so this is a monic quadratic trinomial. So I first give you the factorized form. Okay, so let's see when we expand them how what happens when you expand this um, x plus three and x plus five. Okay, so what do we get is um, if you use FOIL, that means if you use map for like this, all right, okay, then you will get the four terms, all right. So I'm not going to emphasize that. You see, it's, you should have been understood this pretty, pretty well. Okay, so after you get this and you will have simplified them, you will have the final. Um, the final product of the expansion, okay? But for factorize, what happens? We are going to do the things uh, reversely. So that means for factorization, you are going to move this term. So let me put it here. Come this one, right? So that's what I'm going to do, okay? So for factorization, it pretty much you have to do the things in a reverse manner. Okay, so that means for this one, you need to write the terms into this one. So that's the key. So you need to separate the middle term to two terms, and and of course, um, at this stage we we just possibly we just treat this at fifteen. There's nothing. Special about this, all right. So the key is how can we factorize these to come to the last the, the products, right? Okay. So so if you still remember, what we are going to do is to take to factorize the first two terms and the factorize last two terms, and then you will see two. Two identical binomial terms, and that's x plus three. You treat it as HCF or just a common factor. All right. So when you uh, just move them out over here, what left behind should be x m plus five. So that's how we do how we do it. And the key for this method is: can we separate the middle term to two terms? Okay, the key is that eight, so a equal to three plus five, and also you need to make sure that multiplication between three and five must equals that's fifteen, right? So you have to make sure not only three plus five equal to eight, but also fifteen. You need to make sure three times five equal to fifteen. Okay, so here's the key. So we need that two numbers such that we know three plus five equal to a. Also, three times five equal to fifteen. So these are what we call two key numbers for your factorization. Okay. So for the previous monic polynomial, we know that the two key member, uh, two key numbers must be factor of the middle number. The middle number normally we call b, right? So, because for monic one, the quadratic form is right as this. Ah, oh, sorry, B C. Sorry. So the middle term, the middle coefficient is B, and and the um ah uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay. So the two key numbers must be must be the factor of the last. Last constant, which is c, and the sum. You make sure that sum equals the middle term. Okay, just like 
the sum equals to the trend, the product equals to the, to the last to last constant. Okay, so that's for monic. So um, how about law monic one? Okay, so let's first define what to mean by law monic one. Law monic one means that you will see that's the number in front of x square. It's not one. It's two or three okay or five so it's log one okay so this is what we call log monic or log u okay so how could we factorize this so let's see how could we expand it if you try to expand 2x plus 3 times x plus 7 okay you got this one okay all right so you see that 14 and 3 and so these two numbers are what we call key numbers okay and the interesting thing is okay so if you got that's 14x which is from 2x 2x times 7 okay and you got 3x which is from 3 times x okay that's all good and when you check whether this the, the sum of the two numbers okay they will equals to um, okay. so when you add them 14 plus 3 becomes 17 okay so again the sum of two middle terms equal um, equal 17 sum of the two key key terms Okay, but the product is not 21. So here's the problem. The product is not 21. It's unlike previous one. 3 plus 5 equals 8. When you're going back, 3 plus 5 equals 8. And 3 times 5 equals 15. So that's much easier to understand, right? So this one is a little bit tricky. Okay. And, okay, so let me try to do it in a way like factorization for factorization we need to change the things around you are going to give a, uh, you are going to give an a um, monomic trinomial and you are going to factorize this okay so we could see that from the first step to our second step so this one is very important you need to know how to separate this 17x into 14 plus 3 and how could you know that's 14 and 3 are correct combination okay you see that's 14 times 3 it's not 21 it's unlike the previous case right but when you look closer you see actually 14 times 3 equals 2 times 21 right so it's not just to track whether the, the middle uh, the, the two numbers 14 and 3 the two key terms you separate for 17x it's not just to track whether they are product equals the last term it's not you are not going to track that you are going to check whether the product equals that's um, uh, the, uh, a times c that means 2 times 21 okay so let me first finish this to convince you that that actually works for the first two terms what we are going to do is to take out that 2x okay so because that's the common factor 2 and 14 the 7 here and when you take 2 uh, sorry, when you take 2 out, 2x out the for first term 2x is out and so the only thing left behind is x and when you take 2x out from 14x, it becomes 7. Okay, for the last two terms, you are going to take out that's 3, and x is not common term, a uh, common factor for both terms. Okay, so it becomes like this. Okay, so for these two, you see that's x plus 7 as a common, as a common um, binomial, so you can take that x plus 2 uh, x plus 7 out and possibly you will um, what left behind is 2x plus 3 so that's done okay so that works it works okay so so how could we know we should separate 17x into 14 plus 3 log 
15 plus 2. Okay, so there are some reasons for that. Okay, so um, first you have to make sure that 14 plus 3 must equal the original middle term, which is what we call if what we call this ax squared plus bx plus c. So you need to make sure that these two terms add together equals b equals that's a middle number. Okay. And then you need to make sure the products between 14 and 3 equals what? Equals not just 21, equals the product between 2 and 21, which is 42. Okay. So there are two confirmations. The first confirmation is you, you need to check whether the sum is equal to the, uh, to the middle term. And, uh, this, and the other confirmation is the product equals, okay, the product between A and C. All right? Okay. All right? So that's the key. All right? So that's how we do it. So for this one, okay. Let me copy this for the last one. Okay, so remember this is for our previous case, long mono case. Oh, sorry, this is for the mono case. And okay, so this will be our for long mono case. Okay, two key numbers must be the factors of okay, not just C, but this time it's A times C right and the sum equals b all right so let's have an overview of the two methods sorry a lot of stuff right here okay, okay so let's see for for the factorization monic quadratic part trinomial and for the non-monic one okay so the methods are similar but different okay for the um, monic one which we learned last time the two key numbers must be the factors of the last constant but for the long monic one the two key number must be the factors of the products of the um, coefficient of x squared and the last constant a times c all right and the similar thing is uh, the sum equals b all right okay so Let's start our notes, all right? So that's the explanation. Okay, if you could understand this explanation, that's perfect, that's fantastic. If you don't, possibly after I show you how to do it, you just come back to see again. It's not that easy, but I try to convince you, try to give you some background perspective for you to understand why we where are we coming from, why, why we do things like this. Okay, remember our task is now for expanding to factorizing all right so let's do one example actually this would be the example like what we've done before okay so just just uh, uh, for the demonstration okay so the first case let's say both B and C are positive so we make sure all the numbers are positive here so you see 17 is positive, 21 is positive. Okay, so this will be this will be the easiest case to begin with. All right. So step one, you need to check a pair of factors of a times c. Okay. So you are going to check the factors of a times c, not just c. Okay. So for 2x squared plus 70x plus 21, let me remind you again. Let me remind you again, all right? And that 2 will be a A, that's 70B, 21C. So A times C means 2 times 21, which is 42, okay? So now you need to find some, some factors for 42, and you need to check whether the factors, when they add together, equals 21, okay? So for the first pair of factors, obviously, would be 1 and 42 itself, but 1 plus 42 is 43, it's not 17. So this pair is not qualified. The second pair, 6 and 7. So when you got 6 times 7, it's 42. When you plus 6 plus 7, it should be 13, not 17, right? So the second pair is not qualified. How about the, for the third pair? 
three times fourteen. Okay, so when it's three times fourteen, and you got forty two, and also three plus fourteen equals seventeen. All right, so that means it qualify. So four and uh, sorry, three and fourteen is a pair of qualified factors. Okay, so remember that the key numbers three and fourteen. So when when for the six uh, second step. So you need to use two qualified factors to separate bx. So you need to separate that bx. bx means a middle term. Okay. So you need to separate that middle term into 14x plus 3x. Can you see that? You need to separate them. Okay. So that's the metric numbers. Okay. If you separate them into 14x plus 3x, okay, then you are going to factorize the group. Two groups because there are four terms you need to factorize factorize them as the first pair one group the second pair the other group okay 2x squared plus 14x then you will have when you take out that 2x it becomes x plus 7 for the second pair uh, for the second group which is the last two terms when you take out 3 you got x plus 7 as well okay okay so remember up to this step you must see two identical binomial common factors otherwise you got something wrong okay so x plus 7 so when you see both groups you got x plus 7 as um, as the, the binomial factor then you are going to be successful okay so for last one finish the factorizing by taking out the common binomial factor because x plus 7 is now the common binomial factor. You just take them out. You got um, then the turns left behind to x plus three. Okay, so that's how we do it. Okay. Oh, good. Okay, so let's have a one demonstration, and you are going to do one by yourself. Okay, so for ax plus bx plus c. Okay, let me remind you again. Okay, so that's two is what we call a. That's eight is what we call B. So that's six is what we call C. Okay. So first you need to check A times C. Okay. A times C is two times two six, which is twelve. Okay. Then you need to find a pair of factors which gives you uh, uh, the product of that pair of factors give you twelve. At the same time, the sum equals the middle term eight. Right. So let's see. Let's just think. Twelve. Can we track um, three times four? Well, one times twelve. Okay. But you know that one times twelve seems it doesn't work. All right. You can do some mental math. So three times four. Okay. Three plus four equals seven, which is not eight. Right. So which is not eight. So we write but here. So that means. 3 and 4 doesn't work okay but so you have to do trial and error okay so for next pair let's try 2 times 6 okay 2 plus 6 this time is equals to 8 so it works so that means our, um, our magic number okay our magic number our key number should be 2 and 6 okay so you are going to use this pair of numbers two and six to do your factorization. All right. Okay. Let's see. Um, to do factorization. Okay. Let's re, re copy the question. Okay. Then for the middle term, I'm going to. Okay. So here's the detail. You need to watch closely. So remember the key number is 2 and 6. So you need to separate that ax into 2x plus 6x plus 6. Okay. Then you need to think about grouping into the first two terms and last two terms. For the first two terms, you take out 2x as a common factor, then it becomes x plus 1. For the last two terms, the common factor is 6, so x plus 1. All right. And what can you do for this two pair? Okay, so x plus one is what we call the common factor, and so is two. Okay, two and six they are also have some common factor. So the next one I'm going to take out 
is 2 times bracket x plus 1. So what left behind for the first term? So you got 2 x plus 1 gone. So what you left behind is 2. For the second for the second group, you got 2 out, so it becomes 3. X plus 1 out, nothing left, so X plus 3. Okay, so we got factorization. All good? Okay, so let's see again. You need to find, you need to track the product between A, C, and then you need to find a pair of factors of A times C, okay? And then you need to track whether the sum of those two numbers give you the middle number. If that's the case, then you could separate that's the middle term AX into um, two terms using that two numbers qualify and you do the factorization. All right, okay. Okay, so you need to factorize this. Again, you see there's number in front of X squared 3, so it's a long monic one. So can you do it now? Okay, I'm going to give you some time. If you miss something, go back to the video to see what's the details. All right? Okay, so here's the answer, all right? Okay, so first you need to uh, see the product of um, A times C, which is 48, and you need to find a pair of factors for 48. But then, if you try a few times, you can come up with that's 4 times 12, 48, and 4 plus 12, 16. So, um, so that's 4 and 12. Other key numbers you are looking for. So that's why you could separate that 16x into 4 and 12. And then the next one is you are going to factorize them by taking out the common factors into two, uh, in, in each of the two groups. And you got 3x plus 4 here. You can just, if when you see that's common binomial, that means you are, you are doing some, you are, you are doing some uh, uh, thing. So you are in the good direction. So you just take out that um, uh, 3x plus 4, then you got the answer, right? OK. so. That's how we do it. Okay, so here's some practice. Okay, that's where you need to do some a bit more practice to make sure you understand this. Okay, please finish. That's practice one, A, B, C, before you move on. All right, so because you're not at home, I'm not going to rush you to to just finish case one, case B, okay? And sorry, case one, case two. So between case one, case two, make sure you consolidate what you've learned in case one. All right. Try to finish these three questions before you move on. All right. Okay. Okay. For case two, this time C is still positive, but now B is negative. So here is the, the key is we see the middle term of B is negative and C is positive. If you still remember what we have done for our case in monic trinomials. In this case, we are going to come up with two negative factors, two negative factors of A times C, okay? Why they must be two negative factors? Because the last term is positive, all right? But the middle is negative. So if you, you come up with two negative factors, two negative add together, still negative. So, so you will be, uh, you will be possible to give you the negative middle numbers, okay? So, okay, so again, the same process. Okay, so this time A is 3, C is 6, so A times C is 18. Okay, so instead of consider 18 as, as 1 times 18, now you consider it's negative 1 times negative 18 because the middle term is negative, and the last term is positive. Because 18 still equals minus 1 times minus 18, right? Two minus multiply together become positive. Okay, but you need to track whether that's minus one and minus eighteen. When they add, when they are added together, they give you minus eleven, which will, which is not the case for the first trial. And for second, when you consider eighteen minus three times minus six, but minus three minus six is not minus eleven yet. Okay, so sorry. 
ones. Okay. And the last pair, minus 2 times minus 9 equals 18, but n minus 2 minus 9 equals minus 11. Okay, so that pair work. So that means minus 2 and minus 9 will be our magic number. Okay, so you are going to separate that minus 11 into two magical number. Okay, minus 2 minus 9x. Okay, and then you could just try to factorize them. For the first two terms, 3x squared minus 2x, you just take that x out, you got 3x minus 2. For the last two terms, if you take that minus 3, be careful here, when you take out minus 3, you need to add bracket for the last two terms. And that's originally plus 6, but now because you take out minus 3, so the number in, uh, inside becomes minus 2. All right, so you have to change the sign. All right, okay, so that's how, how we do it. And last step is just take out 3x minus 2 as a common factor. So so we finish here, right? Okay, so let me show you how to do at least one example right here. Okay, again, so the middle number is negative, the, the final, the last number is positive. Okay, let's see. A times C is 2 times 10, which will be 20. Okay, so you need to find the factor, so 20. All right, so let's have some track. Okay, so, oh, I think I, I got a mistake here. It should be minus 19. Oh, that, that's all right, that's all right, okay. There's no problem. Okay, so let's have some look. Okay, so for 20, possibly you might think that 20 equals minus 2 times minus time. Remember, in this case, both numbers should be minus, all right? And minus 2 minus plus minus 10. Wow, I might write like this, minus 10. So it's minus 12. So it's not, it's not minus 9, right? So we just say it's not minus 9. So that's but, all right. So it doesn't work, does it? Okay, um, for the first pair, okay. Let's try another one. Minus four times minus five. Okay, and this time minus four plus minus five. It's really minus nine. So we know that's minus four minus five. I qualify all right okay so the next step would be you need to try um, you just try to separate that middle term into minus 4x minus 5x always track whether they equals right and then you are going to Okay, for the first two terms, 2 and 4, the common factor 2, x squared x, the common factor x, so x minus 2, right? So for the last two terms, 5 and 10, so you take out minus 5, okay, so the first term becomes x. For the second term, be careful, originally is plus, now becomes minus. Make sure you got a pair of common term, common binomial, and that's it. So it finish. All right. Okay. So just remember, it will be the same as the previous one, but you need to create two negative factors because the last term is positive, so then middle term is negative. All right. Okay. So let me give you some time to try on this. Okay. Okay. So that's what we've got. All right. So it should be no problem for this one. Okay, good. And all right, so let's move on. Okay, so here's the practice before you move on to case three, right? Okay, try to do them. Okay, make sure you understand how to do it. Okay, so case three, when C is negative, okay? So when C is negative, so previous two cases, C is positive. So, but 
here comes the other variation when c is negative so the last number is negative number and i think when the last number is negative number it would be the most difficult case because for negative numbers when you consider the factors okay so it must be one positive or one negative you need to see the combination right okay so which number are you going to put into positive number which number is uh, which factor is going to be negative factor for example minus 10 okay when you times 3 becomes minus 30 okay so it's, it's negative so when it's negative you need to think okay when we factorize that's minus 30 it could be minus 1 times 30 or 1 times minus 30 right so you need to consider which sign which number you need to put a negative sign but if you got some experience you should understand that if the middle term in this case which is negative then you should put the negative sign to the uh, onto the bigger number you should be onto the positive uh, onto onto 30 in this time so let's see what happens if you get it wrong okay so for the first case okay we got a times c is minus 30 okay so if you consider minus 30 as minus 1 times 30 so here's the problem if you add minus 1 plus 30 it's actually a positive number so there's no way to become minus negative number okay so it would be better if you consider 1 times minus 30 although it is still not the answer we want but at, but at least it should be negative okay so if the middle term is negative you should put the negative sign on the bigger factor all right make sure that so we try next one 3 times minus 10 but still 3 minus 10 3 plus minus 10 is minus 7 it's not minus 13 until you've got um, 2 times minus 15 2 plus minus 15 is minus 30 so these are two magic number all right so when you factorize them you got 2x minus 15x beware of the sign that's very important and when you take out common factor for the first pair it should be x for the next pair so minus 5 okay so then you will see pair of common binomial okay you just take that binomial out you got you got a factorization done okay so the key for this for this case is to one to have one man uh, one negative factor and one positive factor whether which one should be the negative uh, depends on the middle term if the middle term is negative put the negative sign onto the bigger number otherwise onto the po onto the uh, positive number okay so here's the case so let's try the first one okay so a times c minus 20 all right and you need to see minus 20 equals there are lots of cases let's let's see um, for example 1 times 20 okay but you have to make one of one of them be negative so because the middle term is negative so I make the bigger number negative okay so my 1 times minus 20 is my 20 and 1 plus 1 plus that's minus 20 is minus 19 so you satisfy the condition so we know that's 1 and minus 20 would be our case we're looking for all right so let's try to do it okay we need to separate the middle term into x minus 20x minus 10 okay for first two terms take out x 2x plus 1 for the last two term take out minus 10 2x plus 1 2x plus 1 x minus 10 okay that's how we do it okay so that's our first first one I'm going to do another one because this time the last term is negative but the, but the middle term is positive okay let's try this again a times c 2 times minus 15 which is minus 30 okay and also you will have to track whether minus 30 equals okay um, 
there are a few possibilities, but let me make the correct one. 3 times 10. Okay, but you have to make one negative because the middle middle term is positive. Let me make the smaller number as post uh, as negative. Okay, so minus three plus ten is it seven? Yes. So so that means minus ten, minus three and ten. They are what we are looking for. Okay, so let's try to do it now. All right, two x square minus three x plus ten x minus 15 x 2x minus 3 plus 5 2x all right so that's how we do it okay no problem at all okay so let me give you two challenges Okay, so here's the challenge for you. So can you do this too? Okay, I'm going to give you some time. Okay, so let's show you the answer first. Okay, so here are the answers. All right. Okay, so uh, be careful about the sign. Okay, so the middle term is negative. Okay, so you are going to have two factors, five and nine. But since the middle term is negative, you are going to put the negative sign on the bigger number. Here, the middle term is positive, and so you are going to put that minus sign on the smaller number. So you got minus 4 times 15, so you got the minus sign on the smaller number. That's how we do it. Okay. Alright, so if you got no problem, here's the practice three. Okay, so one last thing I would like to mention is when you see the first number is negative, so what are we going to do? Okay, when the first first number is negative, what you need to do is to take out that um, minus sign. So the idea is take take minus sign also as a common factor, change the sign of all terms okay and left behind in a pair of back brackets okay so okay okay so let's watch here so you've got minus sign here I'm going to take out that minus sign over here and you change your order sign so from from positive to negative positive you need to change your order sign because you got bracket you got negative sign outside okay so then you just ignore that minus sign at the moment so all you need to do is work on the factorization of of the the terms in the bracket so you don't need to mention that negative sign until the last step okay so all the things you are going to do is just like what we have done before okay all the things will be the same what you need to do is to, okay, so I, I, I've I taken out that minus sign, so that means I got the terms inside with the first term positive, then we know how to do it. You find A times C, and you got to five pair of numbers, which give you the product as the last, last um, as the, as AC and also the sum of them equals the middle term. So you got six and minus ten as a as as a qualified factors. And then you just use that six and minus ten to separate all the things. What you need to do is in the last step, don't forget to add that minus sign to your final answer. So the factorization um, before the last step give you two x plus three bracket times two x minus five in, in the bracket. So for the last one, you need to add that minus sign over here. All right. Okay. So if you understand this, right, you can try some practice over here. Right. So, and and the answer. Okay. So of course, um, um, you need to spend some time. So for this one, all you need to do in your first step is you just okay so you consider then you just for consider that 
factorization and for this one you just start for all the thing okay and you just think about okay now 2 equals 1 times 2 and 1 plus 2 equals 3 okay so basically we know how to do this one Okay, so basically, you got what you want here. Okay. Okay, so so that's how you finish the factorization. But the answer should be. Okay, so last one you need to write the answer right. You just add minus sign in front of it. You just add minus sign in front of the factorization you've got okay for last one okay please try by yourself okay the answer would be minus two okay so two um, oh sorry sorry something wrong okay so here would be the answer for this one okay right so that would be all our uh, videos for this uh, for this mon long mom like uh, trinomial factorization so um, it's a bit complicated isn't it okay so if you got some problem you possibly you need to watch more um, you need to watch over uh, a few times if you um, got something you don't understand please try to send me email to ask the question you might also post your question in the YouTube link so I could see all right so and for the more practices I've given you um, some practice um, just uh, after the notes you see that three question from your textbook and you just try them because they mix all the questions together so it's a very good practice to see how much you understand and give you the answers as well all right so okay so do some work okay see you next time